Hello students. Welcome back to my channel, The Goddess of Econ. Today, I will cover the economic concept called Price Elasticity of Demand, or PED for short. Please note that this is a non-calculus version made for beginners in economics. So, please follow, follow me. So, what on heaven and earth is the price elasticity of demand of a good? Well, you can think of it as a measure of how elastic, like a rubber band, a good is to the change in its price. If the quantity demanded changes a lot due to a small change in its price, the good is said to be price elastic. Of course, if the quantity demanded doesn't change much, then it is price inelastic. The price elasticity of demand is sometimes called just elasticity of demand or just price elasticity, but such names can bring about confusion. This is because there are other elasticities such as income elasticity of demand and price elasticity of supply and so forth and so on. So, be careful. As mentioned in the beginning, the price elasticity of demand is often abbreviated as PED. Also, it is often written with the Greek letter, epsilon. Whenever you see epsilon in economics, it is very likely that it means some kind of elasticity. It's very likely, but is not always the case, of course. So, how is the PED mathematically defined? It is defined as the percentage change in the quantity demanded, over the percentage change in its price. The numerator represents the change in quantity that is due to the change in the goods price. It can also be written as follows. Delta Q over Q, divided by delta P over P. So far so simple, wasn't it? Okay, let's do some more simple math together. Delta Q over Q, divided by delta P over P can be rewritten as Delta Q over Q, times P over delta P. So far so easy, right? Okay, let's do some more simple math. This can again be rewritten as Delta Q over delta P, times P over Q. This is the mathematical expression for the price elasticity of demand you would normally see in economics textbooks. I am sure now you understand why it looks like that. Am I right? Now, I would like to point out that the price elasticity of demand is a negative number. So, PED is less than zero in almost all circumstances. This is because, for most goods, if its price goes up, its quantity demanded goes down, and vice versa. For your information, economists call these goods ordinary goods. Of course, there are some exceptions, such as, Veblen goods, but I will ignore them in today's lecture and assume every good is ordinary. Also, I would like to note that, sometimes, PED is defined as an absolute value, for the sake of convenience. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes it is defined as an absolute value, but oftentimes, it is not. Hence, you'd better pay attention to how it is defined, by the textbook you're supposed to follow. Now, let's think about the following. Which goods have more elastic demand? What kinds of goods tend to be more price elastic than others? Well, naturally, those goods that have close substitutes in the market should be more price elastic than those that do not. Don't you think? This is because, as the price of a good goes up, people can very easily substitute away from that good but instead choose to consume its close substitute. One such example would be butter and margarine. Given that butter and margarine are close substitutes to each other, it is no surprise that the absolute value of the price elasticity of demand for both butter and margarine is relatively high. Can you think of the opposite case? I mean the case where there is no close substitute in the market. Hmm. One item I can think of is this. Unlike butter or margarine, there is no close substitute for eggs. Well, at least that's the case for me. This feature tends to make the demand for eggs relatively price inelastic. Another contrasting example I would like to show is luxury goods versus necessities. Common sense tells us that since necessities need to be consumed by many people in everyday life, it has relatively low price elasticity of demand. I mean in absolute value. On the other hand, luxury goods quantity demanded is likely to be more price elastic, as many people wouldn't quite think of them as very necessary in everyday life. So, the price elasticity of demand is likely to be higher than that of the necessities, again in absolute value. Lastly, when the absolute value of PED is greater than 1, economists say the good has elastic demand or is price elastic. When the absolute value of PED is exactly equal to 1, economists say the good has unitary elastic demand or is unit elastic. 
When the absolute value of PED is less than 1, economists say the good has inelastic demand or is price inelastic. I hope today's lecture was very clear to even the very beginners of economics. In my next Econ 101 lecture, I plan to cover this concept more in depth, using calculus, along with some graphs. So, please do visit again if you want to learn more. And don't forget to like and subscribe before you go. May God bless you all.